today is uh, I would call I've been meeting you for many uh, days during these orientation sessions. But today I would consider as the most important day for me because I'm going to introduce you one of the most important personalities in the faculty today for this special session. And she is none other than Professor Inoka Kudavidanage, who is a professor in conservation biology and coming from my own department, Department of Natural Resources. So she has been a very prominent faculty member since a number of years. And I would personally call her my mentor throughout my entire undergraduate career and even after that very well. So <clears throat> for, for you all who do not know her yet, because uh, I'm sure for the Department of Natural Resources, the students uh, from our department already know uh, who she is. But since we are having the entire faculty here today, she is the director of Tropical Ecosystem Research Network, a prominent uh, biodiversity conservation and ecosystem uh, research institution or an organization. She is the director of TURN, Tropical Ecosystem Research Network, and also the country representative for Sri Lanka in the Association for Tropical Biology and Conservation, which we all know as the ATBZ, the Asia Pacific chapter, and also had been a former president of the ATBZ Asia Pacific chapter and a trustee of the Federation of Environmental Organizations, the FEO, plus a co-chair in the Wildlife and Nature Protection Society, to tell you in very brief who she is. And uh, apart from everything, she is a wonderful uh, human being who would always love the nature and do whatever she could to preserve the nature in its integrity and in, in its virgin nature, virgin level. So there is a lot to learn from her for you all. So make sure that you spend this one hour with her, getting whatever the maximum uh, that you could get from her talk. And by interacting with her in Sinhala or in English, the language won't matter. Please make sure that you interact with our resource person today, Professor Inoka Kudal Danage. Dear Madam, I would now hand over the session to you with uh, more than 120 students. It's a, it's a good number for you. And I'm sure we, this will be a very wonderful session. Thank you, dear ma'am, and over to you. Thank you, Dr. Deep Chandi, and uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, the success or the pride of a teacher is often the students. And I don't think I need any more examples. Once upon a time, Dr. Deep Chandi Lekang was one of my students. And uh, by looking at her, I can gauge my success. So welcome you all. And I think Dr. Chahan is also here. Thank you for arranging this session. I'm going to switch off my video uh, once I put the PowerPoint up because you'll have plenty of time to see me at the faculty once you come in. But for the moment being, I'm uh, switch, switching it off. Yes. And uh, first of all, uh, Deep Chandi, can you all hear me very clearly? Am I audible? All fine, ma'am. Yes. Good, good. If there's any sort of interruption, please let me know. Because right now, I'm in Habbantata at one of our field stations. You might hear more bird calls than my own birding. So, there are students from my department who are yet to come in. There are students from the faculty. So, although my talk is more biased towards nature environment, and it's more sort of uh, close for the natural resource students. Nature is part of us. We are part of nature. And there's nothing that can stop you from appreciating it, being close to it, reaching out to sort of uh, for your elemental relaxation or for any other thing as a hobby or whatever it is. So discussing these things at a later stage for those who are not in our you might remember things as you go around, as you travel, as you hear news. You might be able to relate to certain things that I'm talking about. And eventually, since I'm around, please come and poke me at any given time if I'm there. And feel free to ask questions or discuss. Or even if you're from a different department, if you feel that you want to be part of some of this work without uh, disturbing your academic work, you're most welcome. So let's uh, get to the talk.
right can you see my screen yes ma'am okay i'm just gonna uh, toggle between a couple of slides just to see with, oh why is that let me open it again I'm moving between, uh, I'm just. Can you see the transition? Yes, ma'am, but not on this uh, the PowerPoint, the slide mode. No, no, I'm not putting the slide mode. Okay. Channel. Okay. okay. Then so, fine, ma'am. I'm just going to okay. go. On. Okay. Since everybody's uh, like this is on everybody's screen, I guess it's fine, right? Okay. So this is just. Random talking, random talking about conservation, about nature, about uh, wildlife issues, things that you could be part of. As I said, it's not uh, like a formal presentation that has a beginning and an end and middle, just a bunch of topics. Feel free to sort of uh, even type, if you have any questions, put them in the chat or share it with uh, Dr. Deep Chandi. Uh, at the end, if we have a few minutes, I don't think we will have much time because all we only have 45 minutes left, right? So, uh, I think you may have gone through this before because there have been other uh, lectures, other things. Sabaragam University, the most beautiful university in Sri Lanka. I say that without any fear, right? It's not just because uh, it's my university or it's your university. The location, uh, sitting in the sort of a transition zone close to the mountains, close to the dry zone, where you have elephants, leopards, the temperature can go down to like really like even 16, 17 at times. From your faculty, you can see Horton Plains. From your faculty, you can see Woodalava. No other university is in such a wonderful locations. So you are privileged. Please don't spend all four years stuck inside the faculty whenever you have free time. Travel, go, explore with your fellow students. That's my first, first ever request to you. Feel free to explore because it's going to be one of the most beautiful periods of your life. Uh, I come from Department of Natural Resources. Some of you will end up here. Some of you will walk around this faculty, but the doors are open for you anytime, even though you're from a different department to come and interact. Some of my sort of students who have worked with me in the field, gone to the field, are from even different departments. As NR students or as students from the faculty, you will have many encounters with wildlife. It's leopards or snakes. I have to build my uh, snake uh, sort of. Uh, uh, we have uh, there are situations where snakes come in. We go and save them. So the rescue team, we need to set up a new rescue team. And uh, there have been students from other departments. So there are a lot of opportunities apart from your academic work to interact with nature. Be part of it. For me, I use this picture not for any other reason. Uh, I'm an academic, but before all that comes, my affinity or my love towards wild animals. The second one where I, I look like a Telbihet Karya holding snakes is actually to make people understand that uh, certain beliefs we have, now those things are what we call Le Maapila and uh, Nidhi Maapila, Naga Maapila. People believe that Maapilas uh, or Boigas suck blood or they come in packs of seven. All these things are myths. They are like mild venomous, they, are not, they can't harm you. And pretty much all these animals that are apart from the leopard, who's this fellow is in the zoo, but still, all these animals that are in this slide are not too far from your faculty. You have elephants three, four kilometers from your faculty. You have leopards so close to where you are. You have snakes, you have fishing cats, you have pythons, all these things. Pangolins, which are hard to see. You are not too far from the wilderness. You are in the heart of it. And talking of uh, biodiversity, I always like to use this slide. Uh, nature, environment, I do not know about each of your family background, but we are closely linked with nature and environment, right? I always ask Deepchandi's subject, sustainable uh, utilization. 
ஐ ஆல்வேஸ் ஆஸ்க் வென் யூ ஸ்டார்ட் லேர்னிங் அபவுட் சஸ்டெயினபிள் யூஸ் சிங்கல் கேனா திருசார பாவித்தே கேளா வே ஆர் யூ டேக் வட் யூ நீட் ஜஸ்ட் வட் யூ நீட் அண்ட் சேவ் ஃபார் த ஃபியூச்சர் ஜெனரேஷன் இஃப் யூ ஆர் எனி பாடி சேங் யூ மேக் அ சேவ் போ கண்டிதோடான் திபே தட்ஸ் யோர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லெசன் ஆஃப் சஸ்டெயினபிலிட்டி டேக் வட் யூ நீட் ஜஸ்ட் வட் யூ நீட் அண்ட் வி ஆர் பேட் பீப்புள் இஃப் யூ டேக் மோ ரைட் our songs our stories our practices all these things are directly or indirectly related to nature we had wonderful scientifically driven systems that we didn't even know science if you take what we call ellanga i will talk about this to nna students sometimes later within your uh, second year where we have this cascade system of uh, tanks interconnected to the paddy fields and the village and all thus so much science behind this so if you go back and investigate the science behind most of these cultural practices you will be surprised how much knowledgeable we were traditionally as sri lankans so this is one i'm kind of giving you points to explore points to think about because we have four years to talk i'm not going to just teach you everything within this one hour but one point is think about the science behind our culture tradition and practices even your stories right so coming to sri lanka one of the most important thing is we proudly say that sri lanka is a biodiversity hotspot yep it's a proud reason to be proud because there's so much biodiversity so much endemism but at the same time being a biodiversity hotspot is also a uh, kind of sad kind of uh, a red light means a hotspot indicates that we have a very high degree of threat as a second point i'm going to highlight to you sri lanka as a small country for me after traveling so many years in different countries there's no place like sri lanka this diversity this ecosystem diversity this uh, variation is something that you cannot see anywhere in the world i tell with much trust this is the most wonderful country in the world when it comes to biodiversity at the same time there's so much attention required to safeguard this as a hotspot we are threatened i'm just going to share you a picture this is of a uh, kumana national park stamps we have something called top 7 like africa's top 5 we have top 7 turtles the the blue whale black neck stork then the, the the crocodiles the bear the elephants leopard we have top 7 in one national park you can see all seven you wonder how you can see blue whales in national park but it's along the coastal line and there are opportunities for you to see whales and dolphins there so just one example i'm just sharing photos i'm not going to dwell much on this uh i carry a small camera around and take photos one because i love taking photos two it's not a professional business but i can use them in my powerpoints my teaching you see some of the pictures that you take the reason i'm showing you this is you wouldn't see until you start looking that's something that we don't do if i ask you to name uh 10 trees that you see from your home to your bus stop sometimes you start wondering have i actually really looked so just remember the line you wouldn't see until you look same thing with nature once you start looking carefully you will discover more and more that's a skill that you have to sharpen and this is the best place to do that here you will have chances to see lot of things just start paying attention okay ecosystems biodiversity they are all so very quickly and our students will hear this thing from me again and again but for everybody one of the major reasons why this country is so diverse is the geography we have the lowlands we have the intermediate we have a uh, central highlands sitting like a cupcake in the middle of the country and this is what's driving this change and then this determines the the rainfall pattern the monsoons and everything together with the rainfall pattern this biogeoclimatic zones we are creating a huge ecosystem diversity you will be surprised you are from your applied sciences faculty you can see world zen while your temperature is 29 or 28 or 27 in the middle of the night up there it's minus 2 at times can you believe you can see point to point right if you stand in uh, just before vallavai junction there's a paddy field or along with the vallavai dam you can see the first plane plane that's where you're standing second second and then the third and then the third right 
we are placed in the shortest ecological gradient in the country. That's where your university is. I wouldn't talk much about that. Maybe if somebody is interested from other departments, you can come and have a chat with me. We have very high degree of endemism. This is from the National Red List. Just remember, if you are interested in knowing about the biodiversity of the country, the proportions, percentages, threat, the best thing is the National Red List, which talks about, it's a document that do the priority setting for conservation, talks about how many are threatened, what percentages are there. If anybody wants a soft copy, please feel free to contact me. Right. So we have the red list. And then Sri Lanka is a country that came from game protection to conservation. During the British period, there was so much hunting, especially big animals, elephants, thousands of elephants were killed. Leopards, then jackals, the skins were marketed, deer, bushmeat, all these things. So we started something called game protection. That's an organization that I work with, Wildlife and Nature Protection Society, WNPS. They set up the organization in 19, uh, I think, 80 or something. We just celebrated 100, 130 years. And uh, these were the people who actually set up the first uh, protected areas, game protected areas, even before the wildlife department came into the picture. So I'm there today if anybody is interested in working with them. I mean, as a university student, one of the best things you could do is reach out to external stakeholders and work with them. Let that support your education. Don't let that interfere your education. Work with organizations, network from the very beginning, talk to people, get to know people, participate in activities. So by the end of the fourth year, you will not have just two pages of a CV, but you will have a very rich CV that tells your potential employer or the university that you are going to sort of uh, go to for your postgraduate, that you have been active in many areas. So understand what's happening in the country. What's the situation of conservation? What can we do? Especially for NR students, if you are going to be conservation biologists, what can we do? Other sectors, water, irrigation, all these things. The situation or the status of the country when it comes to the environment, not just environment, if you are from a different field, Understand the current situation, governing factors behind that, the field that you have chosen. So that's another, I keep on preaching, giving you points, but these will be useful eventually. So this is the protected area network of the country. Sri Lanka has one of the highest percentages of protected land area for a given country. For the 65,000 square kilometers, we have about 17% protected and about 29% forest coverage, including plantation forest. Good thing, high coverage, bad thing, we are governed by two departments, forest and wildlife with two different mandates. So sometimes these don't match. And an elephant walking from wildlife to forest protected area does not know that I'm moving from one jurisdiction to another. That is the problem. Good for people, bad for animals and other things. We will discuss these eventually, but just remember that we have two different departments, wildlife and the forest. One is GV Sandakshan and one is Sandakshan. We have things like national parks. If I ask people to say, what are the protected areas? You'll say, Yala, Vilpattu, Uddavalam. There are plenty of other national parks, sanctuaries, nature reserves, forest conservation areas. And especially forest department, these uh, areas got little bungalows that are quite cheap. You could for a weekend book somewhere and go. Very close to you, you have a campsite in Nanperial Road which can accommodate about 30 odd people. It's really cheap. You could just pack your bags, go there, spend a night there if you can book. It's beautiful, right? It, although it says camp, it has sort of enclosures and mattresses. You can sleep there. You have Lunugam Mehera, you have towards Haputale. If you go down, you have towards Singharaj. Explore these places. So coming to some of the challenges, as a country, this is where you come in. University students, you are no more school children. You are on your pathways to be professionals. And if you think that university students uh, should wait until you graduate to be part of the problem solving procedure, no. I'm not talking about political problem solving. Not a thing, not a minute about that. I'm talking about issues related to nature and uh, other things, even your, your own disciplines. Right. From the very beginning, you could be part of the problem-solving procedure 
that's something we are going to introduce to our curriculum uh, this time. We also have, with NR, we have something called undergraduate mini projects and community outreach where we identify community related issues and try to work on that. So don't wait until you graduate. From your university days, try to be part of a problem solving procedure, identify issues where you contribute, plan your work from the beginning. So as a country, we have climate change. We are one of the top countries that can actually mm, look at or relate to climate change, right? Especially we have a lot of evidence. Once again, we can go into detail, but we have scientific evidence of climate change affecting your agriculture, fisheries, forestry, human-animal conflict, all these things are affected by climate change, right? We have forest fire. Sabargamu area, why I'm once again showcasing this, is Sabargamu area, especially around our university, you will see as a dry spell, sort of halfway through the dry spell, the mountain tops on fire. Unferial, further down, Havagala, towards Haputale, Ravana Fall, right around your campus, you will see forest fire. And there are occasions where our students actually work with the forest department to control this. So this is one thing that we have to work on, we are working on to come up with a way to minimize this. We have deforestation uh, as an issue. Once again, if you just drive towards Haputale, right along on the right sides of the, the slope, you will see lots of bare patches, right? Deforestation is at large, not as large as it was before, but still we have uh, land acquisition. And especially this is an area that is prone to soil erosion. And with this, we have a lot of problems. We have human-animal conflict. <clears throat> when animals walk into human habitats, we call it conflict. But what's happening is actually people are walking into animal habitats, invading, clearing, taking over. And then when animals try to sort of survive there, we call it conflict. We have issues with monkeys, with peacocks, with elephants, wild boars. You will hear and you will see as you come. So we these are some of the issues that we have to tackle without harming animals and also finding ways that these two parties could coexist. We have issues in the country with unplanned development. Physical science students and even uh, all these, not just physical science, food science, physical science, sports, all of you, especially NR, will be part of this thing in one way or another, where your knowledge is useful. Unplanned land development in this country has led to huge issues. Perhaps literally one of these days we could... Uh, going to environmental problem solving session common for everybody as a public lecture where we could discuss these things, right? So this is uh, just a little bit further from the university. If you go over Samanala and come down to Hambegamo, there are two elephant corridors linking Udavalave and Lunugamhera Pass. If you go even during the daytime, you see things like these elephants crossing the road. It's a wonderful sight. So, I'm going to talk a few things, just three topics, perhaps, just to stimulate your brain because we don't have much time to talk about everything. So, Sri Lanka as an island has a huge population of elephants. You'll understand that 60% uh, of the country is full of elephants. Not full, but 60% of the country has elephants are occupying it. You find them everywhere. And 70% of their habitat is outside protected areas. So, they are there. And elephants, once again, are part of our religion, our agriculture, our water conservation. They are just interlinked. And we have 10% of the Asian elephant population in the world, in this smallest country, the highest genetic diversity and the highest density for a country. Right? For example, if you take Udwara National Park, it has about 600 to 700 elephants with 250 permanent residents. If you have not gone to Udwara, this is the time. It's just a two hours drive from the university, even less one and a half hours. Right? So this I will skip. They are protected under Fauna and Flora Protection Ordinance and we have a national policy. So this is what you know. But what you understand, or I don't know whether you hear, there are lots of elephant deaths right around. Sri Lanka holds a record for the highest number of elephant deaths per year. In 2022, it went down to 461 elephants. That is more than one elephant per day. This is recorded, right? So that as a country that talks about culture, 
symbol of peace of religion we are in a sad state at the same time elephants are also close to the hearts of the people now all these pictures that i have taken talks of different elephants one in kabilitta who would come and steal fruits or one in near udavallavi who would sort of uh, raid jeeps all these animals got stories to tell and we know um, there's a tusker database online if you go online and check we have names for the tuskers people know the elephant but there are lots of things that we need to talk about when it comes to elephant conservation i'm sorry as i said this is nr bias in our students we will be discussing these things uh, eventually right eventually about legal protection about uh, habitat restoration health challenges there are lots of things that we have to discuss when it comes to elephants for students who are not in our this could be one thing that can stimulate your brain because it's a big animal and we all like elephants api kenan singali ali balwa bali balwa te pawen na kel e wage api mona de karat elephants can be a good way to sort of stimulate your thinking about the uh, environment right and we have something called human elephant conflict which is a socio economic and a political issue we discuss things about wildlife pogolo facebook gile baluth hemo pulu antaram wildlife department barla da neva tiyena right we need scientific backing right we still need lot of uh, intervention of sound understanding of ecology behavior need for monitoring there are lot of works to be done if you are conserving elephants this is just one animal think of all the other animals that are around and the science needed day before yesterday two days before there was a meeting at the the in, in colombo held by the ministry which clearly discussed one important thing the disconnectivity between decision makers and the universities here at the universities we do research that we feel like doing when it comes to close to your undergraduate research you would come and say i would like to do something i would like to do this research but very little attention we give to applications what are the applications of my uh, project how can i use this knowledge because our primary concern at that point is doing the undergraduate research right in the thesis getting the degree and getting out but there should be a, a way to navigate your research to meet the national requirements if there is a requirement in the, the the it sector if there is a requirement in the food sector now here where i am right now i'm sitting next to a lake called mahapita palace this is the heart of the dry zone and right around i see agriculture right around there are elephants walking around even last night there were elephants walking around here people throwing fire crackers but when it comes to selling their products they don't have markets i see like acres of tomato pumpkin uh, cucumber just discarded not harvested because there's no market now uh, two years back there was my neighbor cultivated the uh, pumpkins one kilo came for four rupees what can you do he didn't harvest this is where post harvest knowledge is needed and this is just one and a half hours drive from university if you could come up with good post harvest technology methods train these local communities help them to set up a center right that would be a benefit that's where you can apply your knowledge okay and with that we can come uh, tackle human elephant conflicts so food science department and nr department together could come up with a project that can help the local uh, communities it can come in right uh, computer technology can come in and help uh, to develop novel technologies techniques we work with school children sports can come in and help the local schools you set up a nice project there you are i gave you some thoughts okay so i'll just uh, move away from elephants if you think of this came up with the uh, ips 2020 forces that influence human elephant coexistence in sri lanka they said globalization expanding economy population growth expanding agriculture poor coordination between authorities i double highlight that political interference is climate change now if you clearly think because you have finished your a levels and you come here these are the causes factors that influence lot of things in this country not just human elephant coexistence right see where you can fit in and do something right so these things i will just skip electrocution the numbers of deaths this is just highlighting a problem okay 
the increase, if you look at the graph, the human deaths, elephant deaths now, it's very interesting. Sri Lanka has more than 400 deaths of uh, elephants and around 100 deaths of people per year due to elephants. It's the opposite in India. In India, more people die and less elephants for a large country. In ours, it's the opposite. Right. And things like large development schemes, all these things have contributed to the demise of the elephants of the country. We have solutions, electric fences, biofences, firecrackers. Some of your the students here, I don't see your faces, might be from areas where you have human elephant conflict. You may have experienced this, right? So there are different solutions. Once again, I highlight technology can play a great role, right? Now we are moving from sort of using uh, manpower to using novel technologies for problem solving. That's an area you can think of. And scientific work, I've been studying this for a long time. And a lot of my team members have been students from uh, the Faculty of Applied Sciences who have gone to the field, survey, talk to the people. So why I'm highlighting this is while your students <clears throat> talk to the academics, talk to your senior students. And be part of their research. That's a good way of getting a train and perhaps even being part of publications. So work with your seniors, work with academics and uh, train yourself. Okay, So that's a bit about elephants. Second thing I'm talking about community participation in conservation. This is a park called Lunugam Mehar. Right? It's uh, once again, if you go down from Hambegamo, it's about two and a half hour drive from the university. It's a nice rich park, part of Yala. And we have been doing a camera trapping project. Uh, and many of our students have been part of this project, right? At the same time, the park has a lot of invasive species. For those who do not know that, invasive plants means plants that take over the habitat, spread fast, and are not much useful as food material or anything to animals. So because of this, the native plants cannot grow and there are serious loss of uh, food for animals. So to manage the park, to manage areas, these need to be removed. Okay. And also there are things like this. Now th imagine you have a protected area and you have communities in the peripheral regions who really can't benefit from the park because it's now protected. You can't go in. You can't walk into a park without buying a ticket and you can't extract anything. This is what they do. You do bushmeat trade, you do ganja cultivation, you find one way or another to sort of make use of the wildlife in this protected area. So this is Lunugam here. And these are some of the images from my camera traps inside the park. You will see even broad daylight. The poachers are walking around with guns, killing animals. So we are talking about a system that is seriously messed up, a protected area and a community that's right around it trying to do illegal things to sort of uh, extract resources from the park. So the project came up, I think Dr. Deek Chandi also might be able to tell you more about this. Project came out, especially during the COVID period where people lost their livelihood. So on top of all these issues, you have more problems now. Your family members are sick, you don't have jobs. So we started this project by getting local community members, men involved in clearing the park of invasive species. It's an externally funded project conducted by an organization called FPO. They brought in money. They employed local people. So they have now, this is the third year now, or beginning of the fourth year. They have thought of a daily job. They are cleaning the park. They see wild animals. At the same time, there was a research component involved where our university students got involved to do the monitoring. So, clear bonding with the park, money, park is now recovering, animals are coming back, you have jobs. So, this kind of change people's attitude, turn the system into something more beneficial. Instead of staying outside the boundaries and hating the park, now you are getting something out of the park. The wild animals are coming back because now they have more food. On top of that, we did education programs with children, brought them into the park from the, the peripheral area. I remember one girl saying, I used to look at the elephant from behind my window and used to freak out. Now I'm sitting in a safari jeep and looking at an elephant as a tourist. Changing perception. So training children, livelihood development, beekeeping, medicinal gardens, once again supporting. 
you cannot go to a community and tell poor people don't do something always remember that be practical from your perch you can uh, tell an underprivileged group not to do something you have to come up with a practical system compensation all these things are important then we build them a community hall uh, all these things at the same time, we increased the, the capacity, audit capacity building for park management to do crime mitigation. The reason I'm telling you this story, it's a very good case study that has been internationally quoted. Second thing, Sabadagam University got a uh, lot of involvement from, I, I was leading that project, but apart from that, our mm -hmm. academics got involved, our students got involved because we are the closest university to them. So think about something like this. Think about system where you just engage a whole bunch of stakeholders it doesn't have to be wildlife conservation it could be something to do with technology training for students or increasing capacities of local youth or once again food sales related something come up with a system right so i'm giving you points i'm going to let you think about things you could do once you're on campus by to engage communities right and the last topic i'm going to talk about here is about uh, leopards. I can't ask how many of you have seen a leopard in the wild because it will take my next 20 minutes to kind of uh, get the answers. But leopard is a charismatic animal. In Sri Lanka, we have four wild cats, the jungle cat, the leopard, uh, the fishing cat, and the rusty spotted cat, the smallest cat in the world. Out of that, the leopard is our top predator, right? The leopard comes as close as to your, how do I say, the back gate of the university. By the fence, we have seen foot, footsteps. They are on Hagala, they are on Nanperial Road, they are pretty much everywhere. But don't think that leopards are going to come behind you and eat you, no. They are very shy animals, they are going to run away. You make some sound, they are going to run away. We are not part of the leopard's meal plan. Always remember that. If something happens, if you encounter a leopard face to face and scare it, it might scratch, it might try to bite because it's a cat. Your household cat would do the same thing. But apart from that, leopards do not come behind people and eat them. That's a myth. So they are distributed island wide. We assume we have a population about 1000 to 1002. It's endemic. It's a charismatic species that we use for conservation. It's an umbrella species. That means if you protect it, you're going to protect the other animals inhabiting that same landscape. Okay, and as all other big cats, it's in danger. We will talk about this some other day by habitat fragmentation, snaring. So one interesting thing, at Belihulle, we do snare removal program where we go to a certain landscapes where people set up snares, not for leopards necessarily, but for wild boars and other animals, but leopards get entangled. So we do a snare removal programs in the hill country and this region. If anybody's interested in part of it, please come and talk to me. Very happy to take you, right? Uh, so we'll skip this. Talk about research. Sabaragamu has a, a great potential for leopard research. Already we have uh, two big ongoing projects. Once again, not confined to NR students. Uh, anybody who's interested can join the field work. But for specifically for NR students, it could be part of your research. Many of our undergrads have graduated through this project. One is called Leosep, Leopard uh, Conservation and Ecology Project, which we did in Horton Plains uh, and then Lunugam here and then Kuman, and we are back to Horton Plains second round now. It's happening. Right? Horton Plains is going to be a very important habitat for you, a place that you will visit for your academic work or for even for like relaxation. It's a beautiful place. And these are some of the camera trap images I have taken, uh, my team actually. Uh, of wild animals that are found there, including leopards. This is the second phase, which we are doing now. When we say second phase, what we are doing is we monitored them five years back, had a five-year gap, and after five years, now we are trying to see what has changed over time. We are looking at the population size, ecology, behavior, a lot of things. Once again, I'm not going to go into science of this. And our students uh, will hear a full lecture one day. But if anybody is interested in another department, feel free to come and sit. We have that option. You can be a silent observer, not silent, you can ask questions, but you can sit in the class and observe, right? So I will just skip the scientific integrities of this, but uh, there are publications that you can read of how we did this, 
how the trapping was done, right? How many photos, how the analysis was done, all these things are interesting. Once again, I'm pointing this out because uh, population ecology is a very interesting topic that can uh, benefit conservation. So I'm working on leopards, but there are plenty of other animals. The fishing cats, the rusty spotted cats, the jackals, where this information is needed. So if any of you is interested in forming something from the very beginning, think that you like for some reason to study mongoose. You can start from your first year plan and say, okay, I want to do a project about mongoose in my final year. But you can start your work second year, third year, you can initiate your work. Talk to a, a friend from a different department. Perhaps something to do with technology designing. Do as a joint project. There's always potential for this. So in Horton, we have identified 23 leopards five years back, individually using spot pattern. We are doing a comparison now. These are the girls and boys. We know where they are distributed. We have something called SCCR. That's once again where physical science students can come in. If you are good with statistics, you could be part of a project. Doesn't have to be your main project, but you could be part of it. You could be a team member for a joint publication, right? Behavior, all these things. Scat analysis. As another thing I want to highlight, we have international students coming here. And I would like to normally link you guys up with international students. It's a win-win situation. They perhaps come with resources. They come with uh, more advanced technology, but we come with more field knowledge. We know about our country, about our animals, our landscape. So that's a nice sort of a, you can complement each other in the project. Some of these students who worked in this project are now doing their postgraduate. Tilina Nimalratna, who was actually part of the team, is now uh, doing his PhD. Uh, Tilina Devasara, who is like in the second stage of the leopard project, who just graduated, will be going for his master's in the same field. So likewise, just two people, but there are plenty of others who've been part of these projects who have created nice international links and got, gone out. So if you're thinking of doing a postgraduate at a later stage, this could be your pathway, making uh, linkages. Right. Uh, this is from the phase two. This is like a wonderful experience I had about a week back. Mother and three large cubs. Just for about 20 minutes, they were playing outside in the parks, the rare side. But that's what you could do if you are part of a project. You will have moments like this. Okay, These are some of the international trainings with students, professionals. We work with wildlife department. We work with forest department. Our students have very good relationship with the departments. They reach out to you, to students, work with them. some of our students. They are just coming back from being part of the elephant census. Right, they worked in the field, so there are opportunities for you to do this. The publication on the top, knowledge sharing and management application for National Wildlife Training Center is a combination of an NR student and a student from the physical science, two supervisors from physical science, so IT and NR. So think of collaborations, and that's another project going on, multi-regional monitoring network for the Sri Lankan leopard. We have a center in Belihulu in Sri Lagama. Uh, Visit the center, see what you can do. It's a huge five-year project that is working in the human-dominated landscape, island-wide, looking at uh, citizen science information, research, community outreach. It's a big project, right? We also have opportunities in working with tea plantation. Now, this is a case I'm going to highlight to all of you. Business and biodiversity, where the business sector, in this case, plantation sector is interested in working with the university to have more environmental friendly plantations. So they reach out to us. Food science students, NR students, IT students, I'm sorry, I'm not ignoring sports science students, but you also come in at a very important point. Agriculture tourism, where a lot of our sports science students have been, I think, involved from time to time. So all these things can be potential research collaboration opportunities for our students where Tea sector is now worrying about not just environmental degrading tea, but they're worrying about how to come up in the market. You have a leopard in your plantation. You kill it. You go down your sort of the, the, the system. You get a black mark. You're going to have a hard time marketing your tea. You convert that into a benefit. You safeguard that. You ensure the safety of the leopard. You teach students about leopard conservation, ecology. You provide safety for your workers you get more marks. That's good for your marketing. So this is the, the trend. This is the, the pathway that we are moving right now. And this is where you come in. 
plus point university is in an area where you are easily can be, you can be reached or they can reach to you they can work with you in these aspects right i'm going to show you something interesting here this is a research station in queensbury uh there's a the place some of our students work there it's a turning point in the road this is daytime this is a timeline I have done with the camera trap, starting from early morning. We have people eat, they have their breakfast, dogs, workers, then towards the evening, barking deer, and in the night, leopard, and in the morning, people. Just in plantation. So coexistence is the only solution we have. Right? You have to coexist with these animals in this landscape. And all of us as stakeholders got a role to play in managing this, supporting this coexistence, right? So there are a lot of things that we can talk about. I'm highlighting things where our students have been part of, especially if you look at this. We work with Dilma T, Dilma Conservation. There are students who have done their undergraduate work, working with them now in conservation, education, and training, right? Uh, Deep Chandi, how many more minutes I have? Chandi, ma'am, we have five minutes more. Five minutes. More. It's all fine because next speaker is also from our university. It's all fine, ma'am. We can take time. <laughs> the last thing is like about a small insect. Once again, uh, Dr. Deep Chandi can relate to it because this is where she did her MPhil. Dung beetle, a little insect that we ignore sometimes, step on without even thinking. Don't do that next time. They are cute creatures if you look at them carefully. They are really important ecosystem service-wise. They bury the dung, they enrich the soil, they provide a great service, right? So I did my PhD uh, on dung beetles as a biological indicator. Did you see the transition, Deep? Yes, ma'am. It's all fine. Yes. All right. And uh, eventually this led to a whole lot of collaboration with the British Ecological Society, we have a project uh, where MPhil student just finished Rumeshika Pereira. Deep Chand did her thesis. Our undergraduates published several uh, publications recently on this. Thiel and Nimal Ratna is working on dung beetles and genetics, a very advanced research. It's an area from a small research, we went a long way, right? So this is about linking up private sector, international institutes, creating opportunities, publications, just one single small animal. So if you have sort of an affinity towards a less studied topic, I wouldn't say animal. I will try to make it common for everybody. A less studied animal, a less studied topic. Don't hesitate. If you strongly believe that this can make a difference, the most important thing is identify what you need to do, something small at the beginning. Build a strong network. Find funding. There are organizations, companies who are willing to come in or research grants, and then work on it, right? So I think I'm not going to talk much. Deep Chandi mentioned TURN. Because of that, I'm going to just uh, tell what it is. TURN is sort of a uh, conservation, I would say, organization established uh, by me and a couple of other people, especially to promote research, education, training, awareness. If you are a young scientist interested in doing outreach work, you're most welcome to come and work with the TURN team, right? And uh, we have field stations. Right now, uh, I'm in the top one, Sparrow's Nest in Habbantotan. We have one in uh, Belihullo and another one towards Budungwela, which we are. Uh, we have it's a nice forest where you have elephants and leopards. You can come and do research. We are working together with WPS, right? So this is from uh, Budungwela site, where our undergraduates would go. The practical is compulsory for NR, but if other departments want to just take a tour, explore this, I'm very happy to facilitate, right? These are some of the camera trap images of that place. Imagine it's about six kilometers from the university. Elephants, leopards, right? And we do annual programs with other universities. We take volunteers to teach, to be part of the team, right? We work with professionals. Uh, training, and this is the most recent project in Mahamaba where we, we, we are building something called a care center, conservation awareness and research education, a center for training. 
very soon this will be completed and you'll have an opportunity to come and work. I'm just showcasing all these for a reason. If you think your degree is just about coming to the university, going to the labs, uh, following the prescribed protocols and going doing the field visits, assignments, it's not that. You will still work, still do. You will graduate with a very boring CV. You might even get first class, but it will be a very boring CV. And boring CVs are not really preferred by people in the, the employment sector or if you are going for a scholarship or something like that. Make your CV colorful. Get to know people, international organizations, be part of field courses. And remember to get a letter every time you do something, get some evidence. So by the end of your fourth year, you'll have a bunch of letters that can tell the world that you are a qualified person and a flexible person in any possible way. Improve your communication skills, talk, share knowledge, do training programs, right? So you'll be good at disseminating knowledge. All these things, so this talk is not just about nature. This is not just about nature. It's about lots of other things too, right? So I'm just going to stop this. These are some of the things that I did with my team, with my students. We go to local schools, talk to kids, share knowledge. You are extremely privileged to be a university student. You have so much knowledge and you have access to knowledge. There are schools in this area, children in this area, who need this kind of knowledge, who can benefit. Perhaps you could sort of make way for another student to be a professional. You could be the driving factor by sharing the knowledge. So every time you have an opportunity, do some outreach work, right? These are some of the things that our people have done. So you as an individual can make a difference. You as a team can make a great difference. Thank you very much. Feel free to grab me if I'm uh, if you see me somewhere along the corridor wearing my cap. <laughs> and uh, happy to talk to you. From which department you are, doesn't matter. You're all students of our faculty. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you so very much, ma'am. Thank you so very much for all that content that you had in your talk. It was very unique. Every word was very unique. And I'm really certain that all of you in the audience got some very nice insights on how can you do better once you find yourself here on campus. What are the things that you could do other than in addition to your academic work, there are lots and lots of things that you could contribute to and get yourself empowered with. So please make sure that we will allow you five minutes if you want to talk to Madam. Now that please use it. We see there are many thank yous coming in the chat line. It really is. It, it, it has been a wonderful uh, talk, ma'am, because you opened up as many as insights that you could do during just a very short time period for all our students, the very fresh students. And in the same way that you are now, right now, you are going to organize, you are organizing a talent show in the very same way, in a kind of a magnitude. If you think you could do more, more, more and more things together with respect to what Madam was explaining here. Thank you very much. Very positive comments. It's my pleasure. I mean, we are getting old. You are taking over. The thing is that you should be better than us. Every generation should be better than the previous. So thanks again for the appreciation. I think we will uh, let uh, Hasinta take over. I think, I think so, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, I'm happy to take later, just uh, email or direct. Of course, ma'am. Yes. Hopefully, we'll be having them on campus soon, and then we can meet and discuss what, what we could do together. All the best, and thank you for organizing this. Thank you so very much, ma'am. On behalf of the committee, let me thank you again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much. Choshani is also here. Choshani. Yes, and thank you so much, Ram, uh, for the uh, for conducting the session today. I don't like to fight long because the time is limited. But uh, yeah, we will have time to discuss these things in detail later. All right, guys.
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for thank you for letting the new students see who a true conservationist is. Right. Not not just talking from some air conditioned room in Colombo somewhere. I I believe that all of you got to see a true conservationist. Thank you, dear ma'am. Thank you so very much. All the best. Good luck.